Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is a review and demonstration on concept paints. I'm gonna be mainly reviewing the no mix base coat system. However, I will do my best to include what I do know of the rest of their paint system. Now this is just a quick look over the system. You may notice there's something a little bit different to most other paint systems where it doesn't have any stirrers on there. And yes, as the name suggests, it's called no mix. Therefore, you do not have to mix that base coat before you mix your colors up. Now, I kind of don't really trust it. It goes against everything that I know about paint, whereas paint does settle. Um, you have a look at it and over time they will slowly start to settle and you'll be left with a little bit of say clear binder up the top um, so for what it takes 20 seconds of just giving it a bit of a shake up that's all i do every time i use a tinter because yeah it could have been sitting there for quite some time anyway i'm going to also be taking you guys through the paintwork on this VL bonnet and boot lid. You can see here I've done the prep work, got them hanging up in the booth, so they're needing a prime. So the products I'm using here is the Concept HS Primer. I have been absolutely blown away by this primer. It dries well, it fills well, and as long as you've got your prep work done right, well then you won't get any excessive shrink back, and it's also affordable. So that's where it really gets the thumbs up from me. That's why I really like it. It's half the price of the Standox or Glazeret primers, yet I would say it is just as good. Next up, I'll touch on colors quickly. Now, I would not say it is the best cut system for colors, and some colors you literally just cannot even get. I mean, it is humanly impossible to get some of these colors. Like some of the pearls, like they just simply do not exist in this range. Like the um, the size of the flakes are just way too small in some of these uh, Nomix ranges. But um, yeah, for a job like this, I was able to get it in one change. So you can see down the bottom of that card, it's a little bit darker. I just put a little bit of the uh, white in and then also a little bit more of that pearl in there. So it uh, lightened it up a bit. And if you hang around to the end, you'll be able to see what these panels look like on the car without a blend. And yeah, for this instance, it was okay. If I was using this in a panel shop, so a smash shop, and it was the only paint system I had, I think I would absolutely hate concept paints. But a small shop might like mine, where people only care about the lowest quote, and then we're forced to use the cheapest paint, it actually works fine. Um, they don't even care like about the kind of paint, most of the customers, and if they do, well, we can get any paint in. It's not that we can't order the top of the line standox or glazer it in, if you want to pay for that, obviously, well, I'll use it. But I'm not going to be going and putting $200 a litre paint on your car if you're not willing to pay for it. It's as simple as that. In this world, you do get what you pay for. And look, as far as the cheaper paint goes, it is okay. Like, it does the job. As I say, I've got nothing bad to say about their primers. I'll continue on with their uh, clear coats later on in the video. But their base coats, 50-50. Um, they're solid colors are fine so like solid whites without any metallics the reds and all the solid colors they cover really well the blacks and all that they cover well but their metallics really let them down i don't know if it's something to do with the fact that it's the no mix there may be some ingredient in there that stops it from say separating but it also seems to stop those metallics from standing up um like i've done silver metallics and it's not that it's mottly it's just that the metallics just aren't there so Full respray's it's fine, but if you want a really awesome like effect out of that metallic and you're doing a full respray on your car, well I probably wouldn't really recommend going for the concept paints. But um yeah, if you're just after an average everyday respray and you know, look, some of their metallics are okay, but some of them are really average. I'm not the only one to think this. I've had a few other people say exactly the same thing. So yeah, it's up to you. As far as getting it into a smash shop, uh, be very wary, depending on the kind of shop that you're in, be very wary because the colors will be an issue. Um, you may have noticed that there was a few color cards, but they're very poorly arranged. I mean, you go on their website and they will pump it up and they'll say they've got the best this and the best that. Every company does that. They want to sell just like anyone else. I'm not out here to slander them. I'm out here to give an unbiased review and they definitely do have strong points in this paint system. And for me, the main strong point is price and affordability. And it actually goes a very long way, especially this base coat that you see me using here. So the Nomix base coat is one to one instead of being two to one. Most paint systems from my experience are two to one. So basically you'll get an extra 25% base coat out of this system. 
So one litre of base coat will turn into two litres of base coat rather than turning into 1.5 litre of base coat. Combine that with the fact that it's already half the price of most paint systems, but then you've got yourself some very cheap paint. And hey, let's not lie, price is always something on everyone's minds these days. Everyone's always after saving a couple of bucks. And if you're able to do that without compromising the quality of the job, which I believe in most cases you are able to do with this concept paint, well then it's probably worth giving a shot. It's just some of those pearls and some of those Zeralic pearls, they really just don't stand up. And some of those metallics, they just don't stand up quite as much as some of the Standox and say Glazerit and some of those uh, more expensive German branded paints that you can get on the market. As far as application goes though, I've never really had any major issues with it. I find the base coat does dry nice and quick. Um, obviously there's a lot of solvent in there, so because it's being that it's one to one, it can be a little bit more aggressive than some of the other uh, paints on the market. Like I've had a few more fry outs because there's literally so much solvent in there. Um, they do have other options though. They've got something called low VOC, which I've heard you can actually completely interchange with the no mix system it doesn't really make that much sense to me but hey send them an email give them a call and see what they have to say they may be nice to you but when i called them up about the hs clear which you see here and i said man what the hell is going on this is taking like over a week to dry he just seemed like he didn't want to hear from me and he didn't want to know anything bad about his product although maybe in the back of his mind he did know that it was right because the first lady i spoke to who was in the color lab, I said, hey, have you noticed your HS clear takes a hell of a long time to dry? And she goes, yeah, yeah, I've noticed that. And then um, got put up to the next person in the chain and he was being extremely rude to me and didn't want to hear from me. So you know what, stuff you. And yeah, you get a little bit of bad rep from the gunman. But apart from that, I'm not here to review the people that work for the company. I'm here to review the paint. Although I do guess that customer service is part of a company, isn't it? And if your customer service is totally crap, well then that's a strike against your name. You're not gonna be getting the best review really, are you? So onto the clear coats. What do I think of the clear coats? This HS Clear, as I just said, it takes way too long to dry. This is even after being baked, it stays sticky and gooey. Like you can put your fingernail into it like after probably three or four weeks easily. So I would not go and use this on a restoration job. Smash work, yeah, it goes a long way because it is a HS clear and you can just hammer it on and get it on real wet. But it takes a long time to dry, like a real long time to dry. It has got to be one of the worst, and I mean the worst clears that I have ever had to polish. Like it takes absolutely forever. And I did this black stingray and that was the job that I was telling you guys about that took like over a week to dry. I was a day away from flow coating the whole thing in Duke Zone Plus Clear, which I know dries well and it's easy to cut and polish. They also don't tell you whether or not the hardener is fast, medium or slow when you are using their HS Clear. So I guess it's not a big issue, but it would be good if they did have the option for fast hardener because maybe then you'd be able to say, well, I don't want my clear to take a week to dry. I'll use the fast hardener and it can dry in a couple of days after a bake and I'll be able to polish it. But um, yeah, that's just, uh, it still does have its place, this HS clear, it's dirt cheap. You know, um, yeah, on a job that I'm not in a great deal of a hurry for, but I still want to use a half decent quality uh, HS clear. So, you know, you get a nice build out of it and it's probably gonna last uh, for a little bit longer than an MS clear. And this may sound like a little bit of a weird thing to say, but this uh, HS clear, it just smells wrong. It do doesn't smell like it's got enough kick in it to really be a totally awesome clear. Like, if you get the Standox HS Clear, like that stuff, you'll be smelling that for days on your body, you know, but um, this stuff just, I don't know if it's an ingredient in there, but um, it just doesn't smell right to me. So yeah, would I use it on my own car? Probably not, to be honest. Uh, it just, yeah, it doesn't really polish easily enough and I don't trust it, to be honest. I mean, if it was just a quick fluff up on a daily driver, something that I just wanted to save a couple of bucks on and I probably wouldn't even own within a year or two, well then yeah, probably I would use it. But if it was, say, like a restoration job that I you know, wanted to have this paint job last for the next 10, 15 years and you know, polish it with a hand wax every weekend, well then absolutely no way spend that little bit extra money and get the top quality stuff. As far as some of their other products go, I've used the MS Clear, haven't got much good to say about that either, other than it's really cheap, you know. If you go and put that stuff on really heavy, it does this really weird effect that I've never seen any other Clear do. It'll like start separating and you'll see these tiny little lines in them, um, like just a couple of mil wide, so 
yeah, like sometimes if you get a couple of extra bits of dust in your job, you might put that clear on that little bit heavier, but then um, you'll fill up some of those bits of dust, but then you'll come in the next morning and then there'll be this really weird looking like bad effect through your whole paint job. Uh, what else have I used? So I've used their plastic primer. Again, that's cheap. It seems to work fine. It's just a 1K plastic primer. It's got a little bit of a silver um, guide coat, I guess, through it. So you spray it on and because it's got this fine little bit of uh, metallic through it, you'll know where it's been. And hey, the cars haven't came back because the paint's flaking off yet. So I guess it either must work or they're too scared to bring it back because they think we're going to do an absolute crap job that they're going to go and take it elsewhere. So that's our first coat of clear. You might notice a couple of little bits of dust in this boot lid, partly to do with where it is in the booth, and all the overspray from painting the bonnet will end up going down that direction towards the fan and land on the boot, causing a little bit of contamination, overspray contamination, so that when I go to paint over it, it actually looks like there's, say, bits of lumps of dirt in there, but all it is is just the paint from painting that bonnet. Not to worry, not a big deal, nothing that cannot polish out anyway, and I gave it a bit of a cut and polish. Another product of theirs that I have used is their 1K acrylic primer, and it is absolute garbage. It's not even compatible with their own base coat, so unless these guys actually have their own acrylic system, like their own acrylic paint system, I don't even know why they have that stuff that's incompatible with their own base coat. Like, it's good to have a little bit of uh, 1K primer, say, so sometimes you'll get like a little bit of a cut through on a panel and you need to put a little bit of primer over it and it's really not worth putting in the booth and my, or masking everything up out in the workshop and then spraying, mixing up and spraying two pack, cleaning the gun out, waiting for your two pack to dry, whereas you just get your acrylic gun and you can spray a little bit over there, the stuff's dry before it uh, hits anything, so you're not going to get over spraying anything, it's just makes life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I still believe that acrylic primers do have a bit of a place in a uh, smash shop, but um, yeah, their acrylic primer has no place in my smash shop anyway. It's absolute garbage. As soon as you go and start painting over it, it'll like start frying up and edge mapping on you, and yeah, it's terrible stuff. So don't even waste your money on it. So you may have noticed that I'm using the Sardajet 5000 BRP. I've got the 1.3 mil fluid tip on it and I've also got the digital gauge as you probably noticed before. I've got that set at 1.3 bar. I like to leave the fan fully open on this gun. That's mainly because I find myself playing with it with my thumb just where the fan control is on this gun. I, um, yeah, I do find my finger just slightly touching it so um, if I close that fan up at all I find myself yeah playing with it when I'm painting and I don't like that so just leave it fully open and don't worry it does spray perfectly on full fan so no need to close that fan up at all and then also like to leave that fluid at three and a half turns out again you know you might want to change those uh, gun settings I've heard one guy say he's got these settings and he goes like two bar two turns and full fan or something and to me I think that's way too much pressure I can't imagine myself spraying with that much pressure um, and yeah I think two turns out is probably not enough fluid as well so maybe I just like to get a bit more paint on than he does but I guess there's no wrong or right if you're getting finishes that you're extremely wrapped with and you're really liking what you're doing then who am I to tell you to stop I learned to paint by feel I didn't really know what was reading on those uh, regulators or anything. I was also taught just to have that fluid so it's hanging out, open that fan right up and then just go for it and smash it on. But that was back in the days of the original Devilbus GTI. So I think they were known in America as the Millennium. I do believe that spray guns have actually come a long way since then. Um, we were always running 1.4 mils, but I've found these days you're actually getting more material out with a 1.3 than what you used to be able to get with a uh, 1.4. And that's mainly just to do with the size of the air caps. They're actually a lot bigger now, so they're pumping out a lot more air. And obviously the paint is following the air. So um, yeah, there you go. This is the job when it's all finished off and it's looking quite nice. Like that's a really wet coat of clear. And um, considering it's on so wet, it actually did quite well as far as so solvent boil goes. Um, so you know that I guess that's a good thing about the um, the clear coat. Uh, it just loses out in the polishing side of things, and who knows how long it's going to last for. And again, as I said earlier, the drying is definitely a bit of a pain in the ass. It takes a long time to dry out. But anyway, all in all, this job from start to finish, I'm very happy with how it came out. 
I did use the concept paints from start to finish. Every single product that I used on this was a concept paints product. So you may have noticed I've got a little bit of a love-hate relationship with this concept paints. I love how cheap it is. The quality may not just quite be there yet. Who knows what the quality is gonna be like in the future. They may end up upping that quality a bit. But another thing I did forget to say earlier in the video, if any Americans are interested in this paint, it is labeled as Transtar. So Transtar import the concept paints and it's uh, labeled as Transtar No Mix and all the rest of the paint over there is Transtar. So yes, you can get it in America. I'm interested to see if you guys agree with me. If you totally disagree, let me know. Let rip on me. If you think that that uh, HS Clear is totally awesome, again, tell me. If you think that MS Clear is good as well, well, let me know. But if you've also had the same experience as me with some of their products, I would also like to know. I've got a couple of other review and demonstrations at the end here. So on a couple of different paint systems, I did the Metalux and the Standox paint system. They were a little bit easier to review for me, to be honest. Uh, the Standox just got two massive thumbs up and the Metalux kind of got one thumb up and one thumb down, to be honest, because there was a few things that I did and didn't like about it. But this, uh, yeah, this paint system here, it's really, really 50-50. Um, some things it totally awesome on, and some things it's yeah, very average on. So um, just be careful if you are thinking about getting this paint system in, maybe give it a trial, see what you think of it. You may find a totally different experience than what I've been having anyway. Make sure you do go over and check out my website, thegunman.net.au, been flat out over there, constantly upgrading it, and every single video gets linked over there. So if you would like, you can check out my RRS feed which is basically like subscribing to my website it's pretty simple to do just type into Google RSS feed reader I'm using one called feeder and then all you do once you've got that you just type in the website that you'd like to follow in this instance type in the gunman.net.au you'll get a little notification every time I update it so you'll get all the blogs and all my videos straight away that's it for this video anyway now you've seen this video get out there and paint some shit thanks for watching and this has been another gunman Production. Goodbye.